get a chance to take a look at the highlight of Gracie's last match. Tom? Well, this guy really impresses me. I mean, he's just so efficient and, and uses his legs so well. That, to me, has been the key for him for him all night. But the one thing that's impressed me about Gracie is that he uses his legs, and, and that, to me, has been the difference uh, so far in, in all these matches tonight. Incredible utilization of, of what, he, what his assets are. Now he's heading... So Gracie is somebody that really up to this point has just completely dominated this tournament. And Bob, I have to ask you, I mean, you've seen the others, you've seen Hickson, you've seen Boyce. How does he compare? Well, you know, each are unique in their own way. They all develop their own style. I think Enzo's the most aggressive Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner that I've seen to date. He's got a very eclectic style. He, he's aggressive. He likes to take the fight to him. Okay, Ray, let's take a look at the highlight of Waring in his last match. Well, he come back to the exact same thing, Bob. Gracie well rested, Waring not. Are you ready, sir? Back in the corner, please. One of the things that stands out here, Waring didn't even have enough time to change the tape on his hands. That's the same tape, Bob, that he wore in the first fight. This has got to be a disadvantage of sweaty and soft. Absolutely looks like it. Clearly, Tom, the issue here is that Waring has to make sure... So this is what James should uh, has to do. He has to keep him at the end of the jab, size him up with the jab, try to drop the right hand or the right uppercut on the way in. Bob, one thing that we should mention here in the final, if they do go to the mat, it is 10 minutes. Clearly an advantage for Gracie. No question, because Waring hasn't been to the mat yet. James got to keep him up with that jab. You can see Gracie's inching forward, trying to make his move. Well, one of the things that Gracie is going to have difficulty with, as we saw, at six foot three is getting him down, but then again, I could be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and there, and there, Hinzo Gracie shows you how you take a tall boxer, kick boxer down. Now you see the bear hug there by Waring. But, but Gracie is very patient. Remember, Gracie is the one that said that he thought it was to his disadvantage that the thing was 22 minutes. He wanted it to be longer. He knows that he can take his time. And this is where he lives in this kind of position, in this kind of situation. It's just a matter of time now, because this is this is the water that Hinto Gracie swims in. And he's now got the mounted position, and that's a very, very superior position. James Waring has no grappling experience. He's, he's going to be at a total disadvantage now. Ray Waring's got to get to his feet. Absolutely. And, and the only way he can do it is throw punches. He's got to throw some punches, spin it up. He's got to turn over and try to get uh, Henzo off of him, get back to his feet. But Gracie is well aware of this, too. And, and look at the legs of Gracie and where they are. You know, you mentioned that there was some artistry and there was some geometry involved. Note that the legs of Gracie never seem to stray from the midsection. His balance is always there on top, Bob. That's exactly right. This is what the Brazilians call the mount position, and it's a very superior position. And if you don't know how to get out of it, you're in for a, uh, a bad night. You had a chance to see the right leg of Gracie. Evidently, he was involved in a fire as a youngster. You can see the leg very well scarred there, but it certainly hasn't been a deterrent to his using his legs. Hinzo's doing exactly what he, his fight plan is. He's going to try to punish James Waring, use up his energy, and when he feels the time is right, he'll go for an arm lock, a neck lock, or a choke. One of the things you see here, which is surprising, he's got the side headbutts there. And basically, it's not a situation, Ray, of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Waring. It's now more belly-to-belly, -belly, and certainly the advantage is Gracie's. This is Gracie's ring. This is his role. He tapped out. That's it. He tapped out. He got him in a neck crank, and that was it. You know what? It may have been the neck crank, Bob, but I genuinely believe that Waring just didn't have it to give. Ray, he just didn't have no. the energy. No, he didn't. After a long fight last time, he just didn't have the energy. You're absolutely right. Well, Bob, it was meant to be for Gracie. Everybody talked about that he was going to be the favorite. Certainly there was an advantage in terms of the fact that he was well rested, but you got to give him his due. He, meant it, he ended his matches earlier. Absolutely. He's the one that made him short. And uh, again... Well, the big issue here, Tom, was getting him down in the first place. Absolutely. That's where he wants to be. That's where he lives. That's where he's going to do his work. And once he gets him down, I mean, he can stay there all night. Uh, it's just a matter of time, as Bob said, before he's going to get into a position that's just going to wear, uh, wear wearing down. And, of course, 
He was in no position to really go for the long distance after that brutal fight right before this one. Bob, let's take a look at the tap out. I wasn't so sure that he had a neck crank as much as he was just gassed. I, well, I, this, this is the same neck crack that I showed, I showed Ray a couple days ago, and, and it's incredibly painful. And he's got his weight down on him, and there's just no way to sustain it. You're going to break a neck, broken neck if you don't tap out. And you saw the left hand, and once again, Henzo Gracie, very conscientious of being the sportsman, watched the left hand go down, tapping out. It's all over for him. And you saw, the, you saw the hand across the throat and against the back of the neck. He's putting his weight on it, and it just puts intense pressure in the back of your neck. Very impressive, youngsters. It just goes to show. You see that body, five foot eleven, 175 pounds, in a fighting discipline that does not have a weight division. You have to give a Henzo Gracie all the credit, Tom. It's amazing. I mean, this guy is just phenomenal. I've been very impressed by by the technique, by the leg strength, by the leverage, by all the things that he's been able to do tonight in, in, in the various fights that he's thought, fought. The guy is just, uh, he's unbeatable. I mean, he's really a phenomenon. I, I've been very, very impressed with, with his with everything he's done tonight. Well, let's go up to John Higginson for the presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, and the winner of the first World Combat Championship from the Grapplers Division with a time of 2 minutes and 47 seconds, winning by submission, Henzo Gracie! So Gracie, clearly the man of the hour, Tom, no surprise. Well, the thing is, Todd, the Gracie credo is to get their opponents in a position they've never been in before and go to work on them. And obviously, Waring was totally out of his element when he's down there in the mat. He's got a guy all over him. He can't breathe. His neck's about to break. What else is he going to do but tap out? You know, Bob, Hickson and Hoyce have been getting a lot of the credit for their championships. Now they've got another Gracie, Henzo, who really appears to be on the horizon of doing some big things in this country. Absolutely. There's no question about it. Henzo Gracie is an incredibly talented man. And each of them stand on their own. And Hinzo did it tonight. Ray, I'm sure that watching Hinzo Gracie makes you want to make a comeback, doesn't oh, it? Oh, man, I mean, you got to pull for the little guy. I, I admire him. you got to admire the Gracies for what, what they've achieved. But, Todd, also, and I don't want to stray off a little bit, we'd be remiss to mention one warrior that we should have fought tonight because of the doctor's orders, and he argued with the doctor, but Brent DeSantis was supposed to fight tonight. He was going to donate his purse to the to, to, to orphanage. He wasn't able to fight, and I want to tell all the people out there he's a true champion, and he'll be back. Okay, let's get up to Richard with the winner. Henzo Gracie. Richard? Henzo Gracie, the tradition continues. Wonderful job. What was your strategy? I mean, I think it was reasonably obvious to those watching, but just from your own words, you're fighting a boxer. He's known for a powerful right hand. You did the obvious thing, take him down to the ground. Yeah, I feel that, that powerful hand. is growing something on my head here now. <laughs> I just did what I know. There is fight grappling, and I grapple him. If he knew some grappling, he would make me sweat a lot to win. Or maybe he, the, the, the result could be different. Wonderful. I mean, obviously, the end mount position again was a classic jujitsu. Did the job. Congratulations, Enzo. Thank you very much. Okay, James. Um, obviously, you'd still be a little tired. Give me a great sportsmanship. Um, I'd like to introduce Christopher Peters. Chris, this was your night, World Combat Championships. I think nobody could uh, say we didn't have some amazing athletes in here tonight, and the, the, the expertise was unbelievable. Yeah, every athlete in here. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. Any last words, Henzo? Probably, sir, for the people back home. I don't, I don't have words to thank the people who work on the event. For It goes on. And at home, I had to send a kiss to Papa Caruso and a big hug and all the American people who, who chose me to yellow in my, for me during the fight. Thank you all. You'll be back? Sure. Okay. Absolutely, will be back. Okay. Thank you, Todd. It's over to you. All right.